So let's move on to, to alemtizumab. We talked a little bit about this, but Amit, why don't you take it up? So alemtizumab is anti-CD52, a monoclonal antibody. It, uh, it depletes fairly broad swaths of uh, immune cells, including B cells uh, and T cells. Uh, it's highly effective at limiting relapse biology, and we did talk uh, a little bit before about um, the, the potential for it also to allow you to uh, off therapy after a couple of cycles to benefit from a durable control of your disease activity. Uh, it has been associated with a rather high frequency of secondary autoimmunity, largely thyroid, but not only thyroid. And it's because of the less common secondary autoimmunity complications that can include life-threatening issues, including uh, platelet disorder or dysfunction uh, or kidney problems, that one needs to monitor this treatment uh, with monthly blood draws for five years. So that represents a fairly substantial burden. And in the last few years, we've seen another family, if you like, of complications that seem to be vessel-related with a mechanism that is not entirely clear, but this has include, included dissections and, and, and strokes and other, uh, which uh, have been associated with fairly high morbidity and even mortality. So that has taken uh, away some of the enthusiasm over using it, at least early on, uh, but, but still available as an, uh, in our momentarium for patients who haven't responded sufficiently to other treatments. Do you think it has an advantage over either CD20 inhibitors or natalizumab? It depends what you mean by advantage. From an efficacy standpoint, it is clearly very high efficacy, and without a head-to-head, -head, it is going to be difficult to see whether one is superior to the other. But in terms of the burden, the baggage, uh, and, and the risks associated, at least with the first uh, epoch of treatment, um, the, the uh, anti-CD20s uh, and natalizumab in people who aren't uh, uh, with, with, uh, infected with the JC virus, uh, the risks are really quite low, at least for several years of treatment. But it may get into the group that you were talking about in the, you know, the one to a thousand, one to a thousand, that, that there, there may be some who say, as you alluded to, well, if I take this for a couple of years, maybe I can stop. They have very interesting data out to 10 years that indicates maybe more than 50 percent have normalized their brain volume and normalized and really lowered their neurofilament light protein. That's intriguing to have treatment just in your first two years, and then eight, nine, ten years later, apparently normal brain volume loss uh, and normal neurofilament light protein, if that's actual. But they, they have presented some data that would be intriguing if that's accurate. 